with the disclaimer out of the way, we can get on with the video. So the first job is to make sure you've got a nice clear area, ideally with something soft on the, the surface so that you don't get scratches all over the case of your shiny skybox. Um, and then we need to remove the side plastics and the, the outer top cover. And to do that we need to remove these screws that you see on the back panel. Now it's worth bearing in mind that I've heavily edited this video to keep it short. Um, but you want to allow about an hour for the entire process. Um, there's no rush, so do take your time because you don't want to break anything along the way. The next step involves breaking the seal on the unit. And obviously the minute that we do this, we've invalidated any guarantee that you um, may have on the, the box. So if it is under guarantee, then either contact Sky or whoever you purchase the box from and get them to sort it out. These final screws are quite well recessed, so you'll probably want the smaller screwdriver or, or one with a slimmer spine. It's a good idea actually as you're removing the screws to either put them in a sort of tray with dividers or even maybe make a note of where they go so that uh, when it comes to reassembly you know where each screw goes and you don't end up with any left over. And a lot of people forget this one. There's a small screw hidden under the viewing card slot so don't forget that. So, that's all the screws removed for the time being. The next step is to take off the side panels. And to do this, we need to release the clip on the underside with a screwdriver and then slide the plastic covers backwards. One of the biggest causes of failure on devices like this and uh, quite possibly a likely reason for the hard drive failing in the first place is excessive heat build up. So make sure that the fans cool in effectively and if necessary clean it with a soft brush or a damp cloth. Now we just need to remove the other side panel in the same way as before. Once you've removed both of the side panels, we can then move on to taking off the outer shell or top cover. You'll want to take your time with this bit because it's easy to break the, the plastic. So the first step is to release the front tab or clip that you see there, and then gradually draw the whole unit backwards towards you, lifting it slightly as you do so. And then really it's a case of sort of teasing the unit out of the, the plastic case. It's uh, not particularly easy, so take your time, and, uh, but it will break through eventually. So with the casing removed, the next step is to actually take off the front panel PCB. And if you look carefully, you can see that the board is actually held in place with these small metal tabs. That's why we need the pliers. They simply twist, um, which allows the, the board to slide off of the tab quite easily. But before we do that we need to unhook the ribbon cables that are on the board. You simply pull the plug very gently out of the socket, don't pull on the cable itself. So with the cables removed, we can now go back to the, uh, the tabs we looked at earlier. You can see them here. And we simply need to twist these with the pliers, so they're basically aligned with the slot that you can see in the PCB. And once you've done all of these, the board will simply lift away from the tabs. 
I really don't see that they were that desperate to save the cost of four screws. All we need to do now is release the board from these two small clips that you see and the whole board is loose away from the, the main unit. And then finally there's just this smaller PCB which is attached to the main one which is held in place with these four small posts. Um, you simply need to push these through so ideally a pair of tweezers is probably better than a long nose pliers. Just take care. Your next step is to remove the three screws that you can see behind the board which hold the hard drive in place. So with the screws now removed, we uh, can turn the unit around and the next step is to undo these bolts that you see here that secure the serial port through the metal casing. Now the port itself is actually secured to the PCB board inside, which we're going to remove shortly. Um, so do take care because you don't want to apply any pressure to the socket itself, which would uh, push on the board. That's the only reason they have these uh, retaining nuts. And then we also need to take off the, the nuts that secure the LMB sockets in place. There's two parts to these. There's the actual nut itself and then underneath that is a washer with two small tabs on it. And they basically go together in such a way as to hold everything in the right position. Again take real care with these because um, they are secured just to the PCB. Next we just need to take care of the rest of the metal tabs that you can see here. This time they simply bend out of the way to re release the two sections of the case. If your version of the box like mine has built in Wi-Fi then you also need to remove this small ridden cable here which is simply attached to a Wi-Fi dongle inside. You should now be able to remove the lid away from the, the metal case and for the first time we can see inside the, the main unit. As you can see there's our hard drive that we need to replace. And really as you look at the whole unit you'll recognise that it does look very much like the inside of a computer which essentially the receiver is. So you can see the SATA drive, power connector, SATA cable, and as we mentioned earlier it has a call-in fan so now's the perfect time to uh, do something about that if it needs cleaning. But the first job is that we need to remove the PCB that's covering the hard drive. So take care of this cable tie which holds the, uh, the cables to the board. Just move them out of the way slightly. And then there's one screw that we need to uh, release on the board. And the next step is very critical. You do risk damaging the entire board. As you'll see shortly, it has um, a pin connector system, very much like a vertical IDE connector. Um, 
so the board will not come away easily but you gently, gently need to prise it away from the, the socket which is on the right hand side. You can now see why it was so difficult to lift the board up. You can clearly see the pins there. But the next step is to remove all of the cabling. The first ones being the, the cables that attach to the back of the hard drive itself. Again, take care and use the plugs rather than the cable. And then there's a small connector which powers the fan. And then the rest of the connectors for the cables coming away from the PCB. And then we can lift that out of the way. We're almost there now. We've got a nice clear unit with no obstructions or cables in the way. And the next step is to release the remaining hard drive bracket from the case. Now we've already taken off the front panel screws, so there's just this one screw here to remove. And then you'll need the pliers as you'll find there's more of those twisty tabs. As I say, why they couldn't use screws I don't know. And then at last we can uh, remove the old hard drive. So the next step will be to take these brackets and put them on the new drive. Obviously removing the hard drive brackets is fairly straightforward. As you can see here there's just two screws on the smaller bracket. So just remove those. The remaining bracket is simply held in place with a self-adhesive foam strip so you simply need to prise it away from the hard drive carefully as you can see here. You'll be pleased to hear that we're now at the stage where we can begin the installation of our replacement hard drive. Now as I pointed out right at the beginning, skyboxes are quite fussy so you do need to make sure that the hard drive you've bought is rated suitable for use with AV or PVR equipment. The one I'm using is a Seagate Pipeline HD2 which is recommended as a direct replacement for the original Skybox drive. So if you can find one of these that's ideal. Before you fit the brackets just make sure you've got the drive correctly orientated with the connectors on the left and bear in mind the drive fits in upside down. The rest of the process is of course the reverse of everything that you've done so far so there's no need for me to obviously cover that again. But instead of that just pause the video now and take your time to fully reassemble your skybox. Then come back, press play and I'll show you what we do from there on. If you've managed to get your skybox fully reassembled and haven't got any screws left over, well done. The next step is to format the drive. Obviously the first thing that we need to do is hook up all the cables again to the skybox. Now the ones that you have may well vary from the ones that you can see here, but the important thing is that you connect all the AV cables and the two cables from your sky dish before you actually connect the power cable. The reason for this is that the two feeds going to your sky dish actually carry a small voltage which is used to switch the polarisation of the LMB. Now it's not enough to do you any harm, it's only low voltage, but it is enough to potentially damage the uh, sky box. So just a precaution. You'll probably have noticed I was just inspecting the F-plug connector to make sure that it's firmly attached to the cable and also that the centre wire isn't touching any of the outer sheathing which could obviously cause a short.
So now we can connect the power cable and insert the viewing card. You then switch the power on but leave the box on standby for about 15 minutes. So it's a good time to uh, get a well deserved cup of tea. During this time it's automatically going to format and set up the hard drive, download channel data and if it's got built in Wi-Fi it will reconnect with your wireless router. So, having had a nice cup of tea, it's now time to turn the Skybox on and find out if we've got everything working. The initial startup does take some time. I've shortened this sequence. It's of around two minutes. But after a while, you should see the Sky Information Channel. If you get to this stage and you find for any reason that you don't see this screen, then first of all, don't panic. Assuming that you've got your Skybox properly reassembled and obviously all the internal connections are done correctly, then the most obvious cause is likely to be the F plugs. These are the small plugs on the end of the cable that come from your Sky Dish that screw into the back of the Skybox. As we mentioned before, the obvious things to check are firstly, the, the wire isn't touching the outer sheath then, and then also make sure that the plug is screwed onto the cable, making a good connection. So assuming everything's okay, what we're now going to do is just make sure that the hard drive's installed properly. And the easiest way of doing that is just to see if you can access the planner. As you can see, no problem. So that's it. We've now carried out the procedure and hopefully it's been a success for you too. So before I go, I just want to show you a feature on the so-called hidden menu. Now to access this, you simply press services, then 001, select, and you'll then see this hidden screen. The reason it's hidden is because it's actually designed for the use by the engineers when they initially set up your Sky system. But I just want to demonstrate the Sky rebuild option. So you simply scroll across and press select. And what this does is essentially the same as the defrag on your home PC. Because over time you'll find that as you make lots of recordings and then delete them, that the recordings can end up scattered all over the hard drive. A complete mess basically. And what this does is reorganizes everything into a more efficient um, use of the disk. Obviously if you use this on a fairly regular basis it may help prevent the hard drive failing again. It only takes a few minutes and the whole system will restart as you can see here. Everything's all okay, so basically that's it and thanks for watching.